Your stats don't matter, and here's why. I get the question a lot when I'm just sitting in Discord by a ton of different players. What should my healing pretend be? My damage pretend? What about my elims pretend? Bitches pretend? Yet the answer is always the same. It's situational. As a player, I can understand how tilting this answer is to get. You've wondered this for so long just for an indirect answer. Let's explain why your stats look so different, why they don't matter, and then the two stats that actually do matter. Many players look at their stats and wonder what they can improve on, whether that be healing, damage, or a load of other options. However, they usually are not comparing that to people that are actually in their rank. Instead, oftentimes it is compared to GM players, their favorite streamers, or Overwatch League pros, which genuinely tells you nothing about how you could be playing better. What you have to understand is that the higher level players generally are taking much more clean team fights than you are in the lower ranks. This could be because teams already know what to do and where to set up, or it could just be a difference in the meta. After all, if the meta composition requires a Lucio to function, the speed he provides will generally make the game function even faster. But what does having more fights mean? Generally, that means more opportunities to heal, deal damage, and even die if that applies. So the first step into understanding statistics is to make sure that you do not compare yourself to players outside of your skill distribution, but instead to those that are at least near to you. The second and arguably most important factor to consider is that doing more does not necessarily mean that you are contributing more to the game. I could do 20,000 healing in a given game as Ana, but still lose if my teammates are not taking advantage of it. I could deal 10,000 thousand damage, but that doesn't mean anything if my teammates are unable to clean up because they are dead. A good example of this is looking at Moira. Moira oftentimes does the most healing as well as damage amongst all the supports, and yet she still is considered amongst the worst the game has to currently offer. This is because she only does damage and healing, providing a general lack of utility to her team. Ana, who is a heavy counter to Moira, does statistically less healing, but can completely deny Moira's with the simple use of her grenade. Raw numbers are only part of a much larger story. Moira has an overall lack of utility, which is why she is bad in most metas. As a matter of fact, oftentimes, good usage of strong utility is what swings fights more than raw output. Outside of the different character examples, who you are playing alongside also changes the way you should play, and also your stats. As Ana with a Reinhardt, you are going to be forced to heal a lot more than you are going to be looking to heal a D.Va when you'd actually be more aggressive and doing more damage with the D.Va. Keep this in mind, your damage numbers will be higher within the D.Va composition compared to the Reinhardt, with healing being vice versa. To look at your stats after a game and say, wow, my healing was a lot lower with D.Va than it was with the Reinhardt, is not a mistake, it is the right way of playing the game. However, many players get trapped into trying to pad stats that don't really matter. I can heal a D.Va all game as Ana and reach similar stats to that of healing other tanks, but that is a trap that is causing me to lose games. So when you're playing ranked, what stats really do matter? I can state with confidence that your win rate and deaths per 10 are the only stats that truly matter to most players within the game. Starting with the win rate statistic, so long as your win rate on a character is above 50%, you are winning more games than you are losing, and thus, you are climbing in the long run. If your win rate is below 50%, that means you are losing more than you are winning. If this persists over many hours, it's likely that you need to review your gameplay and look for crucial errors to fix. Poor positioning does not show up on your damage or healing stats, but it could be the reasoning for a high death statistic. Generally, in Overwatch, Overwatch 1, most GM players should aim to have a sub 6 deaths per 10, with Overwatch League players having a sub 5 deaths per 10. In Overwatch 2, this statistic might fluctuate over time, but let's talk about why deaths per 10 is an important stat to look at. Each death is essentially a lost team fight. The more fights you die, the more fights you lose, meaning you are overall losing more games as a result. If you notice that your statistic is high, what should you do about it? It is not as simple as just dying less. If that were the case, you could just sit and spawn all game. It is all about finding places where you can deliver value without being overexposed. So this statistic is situational, yes, but it can help you figure out what it is you need to really look at. If your death stat is high and you are losing games, take a look at your gameplay. If your death stat is really low and you are losing games, you probably aren't placing yourself actively enough in the fight. So hopefully this video clears up the air around statistics. It's really sad to see how many players are actively wasting their time within this menu when it is as simple as just looking at your win rate and your deaths pretend. Don't worry about the output you are providing on the stat board. Instead, focus on understanding how a 
effective the output actually is to your team towards winning the team fight. If you found this video useful, consider leaving it a like and subscribing for more educational Overwatch 2 content. We are so close to 20,000 subscribers, which has been a huge long-term goal for me and would be an insane milestone for the community. Don't be afraid to ask me questions. Thank you so much for watching, but until next time, I've got a peace out and pass out. I'll see you in the next one.